Hello, Tim Whalen here from Whalen Jazz Lessons. This is a cool video. Um, I'm gonna expose you to the economical genius of one of my heroes, pianist Kenny Barron. This is gonna be a first in a loose series. You know, it's not like I'm gonna put videos out every single week, but once in a while, I'm gonna put out videos of a series I'm gonna call The Core. And the idea is, you know, like the core of anything, the core of an apple, the core of the earth, it's deep down into the surface of it. And I want to use it as a way to show you to how to keep being better at practicing and more aware at practicing. So what I'll do is I'm just going to find a four bar phrase or a short lick or something that's not too long and show you all the ways that you can dig into it and all the things you could get out of one small nugget of information. So this one is going to be a comping example just to show you one, all the things you can learn from it, but two, to show you how important it is to listen to these great artists because that is where you're going to get a lot of things that you could tap into to improve. Like I just said, the main goal of this video is to show you how to practice. Um, it's taking a small bit of vocabulary and seeing all the things you can get out of that piece of vocabulary. It's really, it's showing you how to creatively practice, how to be your own best teacher. And if I could have any like slogan that I could put on this video, it would be don't wait for the information, search for the information. The vocabulary is just the beginning dig into it and see what all you can get from it. So a quick little bit of backstory. Uh, I was in college at the University of Wisconsin in 1993, and I saw the Kenny Barron Trio at the Wisconsin Union Theater, and it was sublime. Kenny Barron, Ben Riley, Ray Drummond, and that just opened my mind to the Kenny Barron world, and I was um, just hooked on him ever since. He's been one of my top five pianists ever since then. After that, I discovered an album called People Time, which is still one of my favorite recordings and always will be. It's the last album Stan Getz ever recorded, and it's a duo album. It's Kenny and Stan recorded at the Café Montmartre in Amsterdam. Is it Amsterdam? Netherlands? Um, and it is a masterclass in duo playing as a piano player. Just incredible. So the example I'm going to use today is a four bar phrase that he did over like someone in love. And uh, it actually really demonstrates the greatness of Kenny. Before I play the phrase, let's talk about all the things that this one phrase is going to teach you. It's obviously going to teach you transposition. I say obviously because I will probably talk about transposition on every video I ever make or any student I ever teach. So that's one. It's going to teach you about 251. It's going to teach you how to get from the one chord to a four chord in a tune. It's going to teach you tritone substitution and tritone substitution with a two chord in front of it. It's going to teach you about four way close voicings. It's going to teach you about drop two. It's going to teach you about chromatic approaches to chords to create movement. And it's going to teach you how to break up voices rhythmically, all from a four bar phrase. The first thing I want to do before playing the phrase, let's, let's talk about where it is in the form of the tune. It's basically the fifth bar of like someone in love in the first section. It's getting from the one chord to the four chord. So the tune in its really basic form, we have. Here's this part I'm talking about. Two chord. Okay. That's it right there. This two, five to the one, and then two, five to the four. Okay. So let's talk about this for a minute here. Let's talk about just good comping in general. Um, and this is where listening becomes so important. That's why listening 
is probably the most important thing you can do as a musician. You got to listen and listen and listen and listen to learn. Sometimes with jazz, people get books and they learn voicings and they learn theory and that's all fine, but people sometimes stop there. Um, and then it, it creates um, a way of playing that's not really in line with the tradition or with, um, I don't know, I guess tradition is the best word, but I'm going to really exaggerate that phrase I just played with just, let's say, kind of voicings you learn in a book with some bass notes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So let's say you've learned your syncopation, some some A B voicings, some four note voicings, and and you're you're trying to get this together. I mean that's that's how it would sound. I'm really exaggerating it, but I want to just play it again so you can hear it. Okay. Now let me play what Kenny does with those same four bars. One, two, three, four. The other way. Kenny. That's incredible. I gotta play that again. Okay, so now let's talk about what's going on here. So right off the bat, what's not happening is things aren't static, meaning it's not going chord, 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 chord. There's, there's movement. There are little um, underlying voices moving inside each chord. Um, he's breaking up voicing with rhythm. And it's just showing you that there is so much more than just chord changes. And you would never get to any of this without listening and obviously playing a lot. You could get a lot out of just learning this phrase, for sure. And you should. Even just transposing this around in its entirety would do a lot. But what I'm trying to show you now is any material that you learn, that you transcribe, it's a springboard to see what concepts are being practiced. And the more you learn to play and the more things you learn, you'll be able to see, oh, that's this concept. A concept could be a drop two voicing. A concept could be breaking up rhythms. A concept could be approaching chords from chromatic steps above or below. Those are concepts. Um, and you can use the material to put a spotlight on what concepts are being used. So we're gonna take this bar by bar. Okay, we're gonna do the first bar and I'm gonna show you all this. Oh wait, no, let's do tritone substitution first. Tritone substitution is on the five chord of a two, five, one or any five going to one. So if, if we're in the key of E flat, the five chord is B flat seven. One, five. Tritone substitution just means that on the five chord, you can play the dominant chord, a tritone away from that five chord because they share the same third and seventh. So B flat seven has A flat and D, okay? If we play a root note, a tritone away, we get E. Okay, well, those two notes on top are also the third and seventh of E. It's a G sharp and a D, okay? Three, seven. B flat, it's the A flat, which is the seventh, and the D is the third. So if you go from bottom to top, seven, three, change the root note, three, seven, same notes. So a root note, a tritone away on a five chord gives you a tritone substitution. So if I go, it resolves down a half step, to the root. If it's in the context of a 2-5-1, two, 2-5-1, two, 
okay? Two, tritone substitution, one. If I play that in context of what is happening in like someone in love, here it is without the tritone substitution. Here it is with the tritone substitution. Okay, now the last, I'm going fast on this, but th that's a whole different video, but I just at least want you to hear it. Now what you can also do is you can precede the tritone sub with its own two chord. So E7 is a tritone substitution. The two chord preceding it is B minor seven, because E, e indicates key of A indirectly, but you can now go B minor seven, E seven, E flat. So in context, that would be Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you had that in your ear because that's what he's doing on that, uh, I guess, the second bar, okay? So let's take this bar by bar now. Bar one is our two chord, okay? And we have F minor seven. And what Kenny is doing, he's breaking it up. So he's got the root on the top and then he's playing three, five, flat three, five, flat seven. And then he's got this shell voicing, root seventh and the fifth, but he's breaking it up. So he's going. Okay. So the first thing you can do is take that original material and just work on it in different keys. Let's try a few more. I'll do, uh, how about A? Um, How about uh, B flat? Uh -huh. Okay. What else could you get from this? Just isolate the left hand. Okay, maybe you could uh, switch up the voicing in the right hand. I'll do what they call Kenny Barron voicing. Uh, we could go. So what you want to internalize here is what's going on rhythmically. There's a there's a rhythmic concept of a offbeat eighth note followed by a half note. One, two, three, four, mm. And then there's also a concept of the and of one. One, two, three, four, okay? You could also break this up with different chord qualities. You could go major, right? Bar two, let's take this little short two five tritone substitution and just isolate it as a two five that doesn't resolve because that's all over the place. You hear this all the time, right? So let's, let's hear the original thing that Kenny does. Okay. Now, just take this little thing and use it as an exercise. Uh, practice it in all keys, going down by whole steps. Okay, I did six of them, down by half steps. again. Okay, that's another way. Practice keys up by half steps. Okay, so those are three different ways that you could just practice this one thing. So 
you're not necessarily doing a variation of it, but you're just taking that and, and isolating it on its own. Um, you could do a couple maybe variations for the left hand, you know. Um, so if we have this, I'm going to go down to G just to get out of a different key. Okay. Try just doing something in your left hand. So I added a root note on the bottom. Now that could be a comping pattern. You know, uh, how about, let's go back to B. So you can do the same thing I just did chromatically, just in your left hand. Where am I here? So now you got a nice little technical exercise for your right hand. Maybe you could add a voicing when you do that. Let me try that up uh, a little higher. Uh... I mean, that's, that's pretty cool sounding. So I just create a little exercise for myself using both hands. That's all coming from from the original example. This is the last part of bar two, but he, he does this. Um, he plays this four-way close voicing and then resolves down to the E. So this voicing is implying B7 or, well, B7 flat 13, flat nine, or E9, which is the tritone substitution. When you have a really altered five chord, it's tritone sub will be unaltered. But now I got a voicing I can practice. Okay. So that's just a little tiny nugget in the end of that bar. Okay, bar three, the first part of it. We got this E flat major nine chord. Here it is in context. Okay. This is a great two-handed voicing. Root three, major seven, nine, five. Okay. So you'd want to learn that through all the keys. But this is, this is, I love this. I found 16 different chords and voicings I could learn from this one chord. It doesn't mean I'm going to stay on the same chord quality but I'm taking the concept of a two-handed voicing with root and third in the left hand and then some sort of uh, seven, nine, five or, or seven, six, five, whatever it may be, but whatever that combination of notes is, and I'm gonna show you 16 different chords you can get from this one structure. So first of all, you wanna you know, take, take that through the keys, right? Because of time, I'm not going to go through every every key, but okay. So let's go through each variation that I found. Well, there's our major nine voicing. Okay, E flat six nine one three six nine five. Okay, E flat major nine sharp eleven. Okay, I just lowered the fifth. E flat minor major seven. E flat minor nine with a major seven. E flat minor six nine. E flat minor nine. E flat half diminished nine. E flat nine, dominant seven. E flat nine sharp eleven. E flat seven sharp nine. No, E flat seven flat nine. I'm gonna do them in order. E flat seven sharp nine. E flat seven flat nine flat thirteen. E flat seven sharp nine sharp five. Or E flat seven flat thirteen sharp nine. Same thing. Let's see. E flat thirteen sharp nine. E flat seven flat nine sharp eleven. E flat seven sharp nine sharp eleven. All from this. 
Let's play them again in sequence. E flat 6 9, E flat major 9 sharp 11, E flat minor major 7, E flat minor 6 9, E flat minor 9, E flat minor 9 half diminished, E flat 9, E flat 9 sharp 11, E flat 7 flat 9, E flat 7 sharp 9, E flat 7 flat 9 flat 13, E flat 7 sharp 9 sharp 5, or flat sharp 9 flat 13, E flat 13 flat 9, E flat 13 sharp 9, E flat 7 sharp 11 flat 9, E flat 7 sharp 11 sharp 9, all from that one chord. 16 voicings you could learn from this. Incredible. Next thing. This is the last two beats of bar three going into bar four. It's, it's setting up the two five of the four. So in context, we have. What we have here is a chromatic, double chromatic approach down to the B flat minor seven. Okay. If we didn't have that, it would be. But he adds that in to get some movement. Incredible. So what this is showing me is if, if you have a destination chord, which is the, the B flat minor seven, you can approach it. So that's not going to be written in a lead sheet. You're just going to see the B flat minor seven. But if you have this now, this little nugget, you can be, oh, I can. I can approach it, or I can approach it from, from other ways too. So, first thing to do is just learn this material. There we go. Okay, that's the first thing. Next thing, let's vary the rhythm. That was a triplet. One, two, three. You could do all eighth notes. One, two, three. What this does too, is it not only gets you to have to see the chord, now you have to see other chords going into it. So it, it, it increases your capacity to, to uh, get to something from a different place. So it really, again, transposition in this way will open things up very much. Something else you could do is you could, instead of going two chromatics, you could start from the whole step above and then go down to the chromatic underneath the destination chord. Like that. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Okay, that's another thing you can do. So you have three things here. You've got one, two, three. You got eighth notes. Or you can do this. I mean, you could also go that way too, that, that works too. Okay, but now um, what you could do is vary the voicing. So if you maybe wanna make it a little more complicated, we're just doing thirds and sevenths. Maybe you wanna do like, um, like a kind of a shell in the left hand and, uh, or even like drop two. Just take, that's the destination voicing. Uh, so you could take really any voicing. I'll take like a, maybe a minor pentatonic voicing. Um, that's great. I mean, one, two, three. That's a nice springboard for getting into other language, okay? So all that just from Chromatic approaches are very important to create movement when you're comping for somebody. Okay, last last bar here. This is the two five 
going to the four. It's a two five of the four. We're moving from the one chord, which is E flat. And we're getting to the four chord, which is the four chord of E flat. To get there, we gotta have, we gotta turn E flat major into E flat seven to get us to the four. We'll talk about secondary dominance. That video is coming out in a few weeks. So, but we can add the two before that uh, secondary dominant. Okay. In context. So he's taking the concept of drop two and also using rhythmic uh, breaking up rhythm. What he's doing here is he's breaking up with shells, and then he's playing drop two voicings in his right hand. Okay. Just this, that can really break things up rhythmically and, and add some interest rather than just, Remember, always find ways to make things move and, 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 and break up. Breaking things up creates movement, just like chromatic approaches create movement. This creates movement. And it creates rhythmic interest, you know, doing de dealing with the offbeats and things like that. So you could take this. We could change the five chord to make it alter. Another variation could be making it a, a half diminished to make it a minor 2-5. That's pretty nice, okay? So this right here is just showing you, maybe we can just break it up. Break up movement. It creates so much tension and release, uh, and, and it makes things move this way rather than just being this way, if that makes sense. I hope it does. I know this is a lot, but this was more to just cultivate showing you all the stuff that's possible to look under the hood, not just on new material that you learn, but when you're learning tunes, looking at a lead sheet. The lead sheet is not the be all end all, it's just the beginning. So. Be your own best teacher, cultivate that awareness when you're practicing, and, and cultivate curiosity. What else is here that I, that I can get out of it? Don't just stop at the source. Go under the source, open it up, peel back the onion, and bring out everything that can come, come to you that resonates with you. Okay, I hope this was helpful, and uh, I'll see you soon. Happy practicing.